Hello everyone, in this lecture we will be studying about uh, flip flops and latches. I am sure we have learned about flip flops and latches in our digital electronics. We will learn it again here. The D latch, uh, we can, if we uh, consider metaphorically, our D latch we can consider it as a gate. It, D latch is an automatic gate. Automat that gate is controlled with a clock. So it happens is when the clock is high, that is when the clock is 1, the gate is open and a man can enter through the gate to that side. And if the clock is low, the gate is closed and the man can no longer enter, no longer enter or leave out. So what happens is if the clock is high, the gate is open. So this man has the capability of being in this side of the gate and also has the capability of being in that side of the gate. So this man can go in and out of the gate at any time required but when the clock is low when the clock is low the gate gets shut at that point if this man is it at this side of a gate the man cannot go to that side anyway if the man was present at that side of a gate when the gate, gate got shut he could not come back to this same the latch also works in a same similar way when the clock is on when the clock is on whatever the input is it will be out for example here input is one but clock is off that is the man wants to go to that side of the gate but the, he, he is not able to because the gate is off whenever the gate opens that is the clock the clock gets high the man goes to that side that is the output becomes one and whenever uh, now from here the man decides to come back to initial position and he can come back to the initial position and at one point the clock is zero at this point the gate has closed at this moment the man is here and he cannot go to that place because the gate is closed this is the operation of latch if it would have happened that the man decided to stay here man decided to stay here till the gate is closed and then the gate was closed what would have happened is may that man wouldn't be able to come back the man would remain in this part of the gate i hope i'm making sense so our latch, what latch is the uh, latch does is when the clock is one, D flows through Q. That is whatever is there in D will reach Q. If the clock is zero, Q holds this earlier value. That is when the clock is one, the man can be here or here depending on where he wants to be. But when the clock turns zero, man has to be where he was there uh, the moment the gate shut off. That is, if the man was here at that time, he has to remain here. If the man was here at that time, he has to remain at that side. That is, if the value if the value of output Q was zero when the clock when the clock turned off, the output Q will hold its value of zero. If the value of output Q was one when the clock turned on, the output value will hold its value of one. This is a basic latch. Now, the design of D latch is very simple and interesting one. D latch can be formed with uh, formed with help of buffer uh, with with help of a mux. So this is uh, this is a general interpretation of mux. You can see we have a clock over here. When the clock is equal to one, that is clock is one. This data data gets out here, and Q is our output. Output is equal to one, or in a simple way, output is equal to data. If data is equal to zero, output will be zero. If data is equal to 1, output will be 1. And in this case, there is a provision for Q bar. Q bar will obviously be D bar. That is the inverted. Since he, this is an inverter, Q bar will be an inver inverted form of D. That is when the clock is 1, whatever is there in D, whether 0 or 1, gets mapped to output. Now what happens when clock is 0? If clock is equal to 0, what happens? It cannot allow this thing to pass. As a result, there is no connection between the input and the output. What happens? It allows this to pass to the output. Now, what is this? Let us see. Before the clock was closed, this point was D. After the clock was closed, this point became D bar. And here also another through an another inter, uh, inverter, this point became D, and this D is being passed through. Now, it is to be noted that this D over here that we are considering is the earlier state. Earlier state means actually this D bar is Q bar and this D bar is Q bar and this D is equal to Q. This is also Q. 
so when the clock was clock is equal to 1 was set whatever the output was when clock is equal to 0 that output will will remain constant that output will not change why will that not change because that will pass through two inverters that is that will get inverted at first and that will get inverted again and that will pass through this mask as a result the output holds its value when clock is equal to 0 and output changes its value based on the input if clock is equal to 1 this is a basic latch design this latch design can be created with the help of with the help of uh, uh, transmission gates here we have connected clock and clock bar here as a result when clock is on when clock is equal to 1 this gate remains on and this becomes short circuited again this way this gate remains off and this becomes open circuited similarly when clock is 0 this gate open circuited this gate short circuited here is a basic here is the operation of it when the clock is 1 this is short and output q is connected to d and this is open so this this loop has no no effect as well at all when the clock is 0 this switch opens up and this switch closes as a result see this is our q this q here becomes q bar here again after another inverter becomes q so we get the output q remains constant that is the value of the output is held here now let us look at flip flop in case of uh, in we can again uh, if we think of uh, we if we think of uh, latch as a gate we can think of flip flop as a gate as well but in that gate uh, we have a, an id entry you can say uh, that is we we have to enter through a push card you know uh, the security system where we press our card or our fingerprint or our biometric system when we when we press our fingerprint we can go in but after we go in that thing closes that is we have a very short moment at which we can either go in or decide it, decide to stay here the case is a uh, case is similar when the clock is one when the clock turns one at this at that very moment when the gate turns on at that very moment if you are in front of the gate you can pass if you are here at that very moment you can pass and go to that side of the door but if you are not here at the uh, at that very moment you cannot pass that is when the clock is one if the value of d is equal to one output will be one when the clock is one if the value of d is equal to 0, in this case, the output will be 0. And how long will that output be 1 or 0? The clock, uh, this gate opens or closes at the edge of clock. That is either a positive edge or not negative edge. We are considering positive edge triggered. That is in this edge and this edge, the gate opens. So, in, in this edge, uh, T was available. That is, there was a person at this side of the gate. As a result, this person went to that side. That is, output is equal to 1. At this edge of the clock, this person was in the, in already, uh, this, uh, no person was available here. So, the gate turned, uh, gate turned on and nobody could go to that side. As a result, output was 0. So, output will remain 1 or output will remain 0 till the negative edge of the clock. That is, our latch was level triggered circuit as long as the clock was one one as long as the gate was open people could move in and out in and out in and out in legal tri level triggered circuit our output would look like something like this because when the clock is one the person can pass through the gate but in case of flip-flop or the edge triggered circuit this is not the case in case of flip-flop or edge triggered circuit a person cannot go out as long as the gate does not open it Okay. When the gate opens, gate opens at positive edge or negative edge, one of the edges of the clock. This is the basic circuit. We can prepare D flip-flop using two D latches back to back. We connect the latches back to back and one, one of the latches contains the clock signal and another latches, the latch contains the inverted signal of the clock, which indicates that when clock is equal to 1, clock bar will be equal to 0 that is if this latch is open this latch is closed if this latch is open this latch is closed they are not simultaneously open at any time 
So what happens is, if clock is zero at uh, if clock is one, uh, sorry, if clock is zero at first, what happens is, see, this is one latch, and this is another latch. We are connecting two latch back back to back. Only the clock keeper. See, if the clock is zero, this thing switch on switches on this thing switches off as a result the since the first latch uses clock bar and second second latch uses clock as a result since it uses clock bar when the clock is zero what happens this is on and the output here becomes equal to d sorry here it becomes equal to d bar and here it becomes equal to d and now when the clock turns uh, since the clock is zero, no signal can pass to it. As a result, the output is not affected by the input. So, if we change D, the output will not be changed. When we get to the negative, positive edge of the clock, that is when clock turns from zero to one, what happens when it turns from zero to one, this switch opens up and this switch closes. By doing so, this latch holds its original value. Again, this switch closes and this switch opens up. That is, that original value is being transferred to the output. So, what it what it's doing is, when uh, whenever the clock is low, what it does is it maps D to an interim state. And whenever that the clock becomes high, this interim state is at the very at the same moment is transferred to the output. And as a result, the output will assume the value which the input data had at the time of positive age of a cycle. If you look at the timing diagrams, let us see. In this positive age, the value of data was 1. As a result, the output also became 1. You see there is a delay here. We will learn, be learning about delay at the later stage. Again, in this positive age, the value of data was 0. As a result, the output became 0. So, the output only changes in the positive age of the, uh, of the clock. So, Whatever the value of data is at the positive edge of the clock, the output assumes that value and output retains that value as long as it does not find a new positive edge of the clock. Now there is another condition called race condition. It happens when two flip flops are connected side by side. So what happens is clock skew. There is a uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a thing called clock skew. What clock skew is? See. The clock does not instantaneously turns from low to high or high to low. It takes some time. It is called clock skew. Because of clock skew, what can happen? Sometimes the second flip flop fires late. Second flip flop fires later than the first flip flop. As a result, the first flip flop already changes its value and its result is being captured. And then the second flip flop fires. As a result, uh, the the output is not held because the output changes when the second flip flop fires late. And this is called hold time failure. Hold time failure means that is the value of Q. It is not held to either 1 or 0. It's fluctuating. The value of Q2 is fluctuating. It can be either 1. It can be 0, 2. That is if the clocks are very uh, not very well synchronized. If one of the flip flop switches at a def different time than the other flip flop. The output, the output is not as we expect. This is whole time failure. Now, in order to solve the whole time failure, we can use non-overlapping clocks. How it helps? We can see that here the clock that we used in the first case, first slash, the clock that we used is uh, our gamma 2. So, these clocks, uh, these clocks are not overlapping with the clocks that we use here. We knew that the one is clock, one of the clock, This, if this is clock, this will contain clock bar. If this is connected to clock, this will be connected to clock bar. Here also the same, when this is connected to high, this is low, when this is low, this is high, same. But there is a timing difference between the switching, because of that timing difference, at no, at no cases it happens that both this part and this part turns on. In case of uh, whole time failure, both this part and this part turns on simultaneously and causes failure. But in this case, since there is a time gap between the two, it so happens that first this part stops and this part turns on, or first this part turns off 
and this button so they do not do it simultaneously and as a result it never happens that second clock has fired earlier than the first clock and uh, produce erroneous result as a result non overlapping clocks can solve the problem of whole time failures that is all for this lecture thank you so much